better, you have to see it done really, really wrong first. And like, learn how to do it. You know, what's the difference between science and pseudoscience? It's a very powerful way to explain science. So our next speaker, um, he was on the stage last year. We welcome him back. Uh, is Rob Palmer. He's a software systems engineer. He's an avid contributor to the Gorilla Skeptic Movement on Wikipedia. And it also Woo! writes an online column for Skeptical Inquirer. So uh, please welcome to the stage Rob Palmer to tell us about what's the harm in psychics. Nygar? Nope. Tell me later. Think about it. Play one more time. No, nope, didn't work. Okay. So, <laughs> so belief in psychics, that's the subject. So, do I need to say that psychics, mediums, clairvoyants are not real at Psycon? Yes, actually I do, because 10% of atheists believe in them. So, maybe because this is largely scientific skepticism, that's a less number, but I would guarantee somebody in this audience has had an experience, personal their spouse, and they believe it. But I'm not going to go into why we know that's not true. I'm going to let John Oliver say it, say it, because he said it much better than I can in an episode of this show back in February. Before we go any further, I'm not going to be litigating whether psychics are real in this piece. For one, they're not. See? No litigation required. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now that's, that, that's out of the way totally. Um, so the kind of harm I'm going to be talking about is something that you can measure sort of scientifically. It's objective. It's a financial harm. Everyone should know that people who are taken advantage by these people have great emotional harm when it goes south. But the part I never hear about is how bad is the financial situation? Well, actually, I never heard about it until the Bells Award, which was, if you were in the audience for that presentation, was interesting. I had not heard that story. A global email psychic fraud scam, which apparently wasn't very well known in the United States, because there was a book in the bookstore about it. Sounds fascinating. If you were there for that, you could consider that an appetizer for this presentation, which is going to go into some details about other uh, issues. So why am I giving this talk? So I personally got involved with this when I was listening to a uh, podcast named Skepticality, and Derek was interviewing a private eye named Bob Nygaard, based in Florida. He's a retired New York City cop went down to spend the rest of his life on the beach in retirement. And then something happened. People came up to him when he was bragging about being a Bunko Squad guy and revealed that they were uh, taken advantage by psychics. And it was a doctor, as a matter of fact. So after that commute, and I uh, got home, I looked him up. I wanted to read his Wikipedia article. But there was none. So being a member of the Girl of Skeptics, what did I do? Woo! So, so this is out there now for people to Google, and, you, and since the word psychic fraud are on there, if you do a Google search for psychic fraud, you very well may get this article which is full of all the uh, victims that he's had with details about that. Um, I later became a columnist for Skeptical Inquirer, and that gave me the opportunity to reach out to Bob to say, hey, uh, could you give me an interview? And he did. It was a, it was a long talk. I was able to uh, write a two-part article on that, and so now this is on the web. Also, if you search psychic fraud, this comes up pretty readily. Personally, the problem with that is that now I get emails like this. Somebody who's lost their life savings to a psychic, Google psychic fraud and comes up with my name and email address. I, the first time this happened, this was the first one, I felt kind of helpless and, and it was like heartbreaking because I can't do anything about this. I, I did send uh, the information to Bob Nygaard and he told me he gets four or five of these a day. And he's one person and no one else that I know of does this. By the way, this is a civil suit because our jurisdiction doesn't consider it a crime to steal that kind of money from a person. So that got me thinking, and I actually wrote this article, Belief in Psychics, What's the Harm and Who's to Blame, of which this presentation is based, uh, to put another bit of information out there, all of the details that I found out about 
uh, this problem that could be easily found with a Google search. So once that was out there, I got some more email, of course, because now, now more of our is out there and it's easier to find with a Google search. This person contacted me, we contacted Nygaard, and she talked to him and then decided it was too frightening to go ahead with it. She was worried for her safety. And that's probably a very common thing, and don't think the psychics don't know that. So, is this just a few people that this might be a problem with? What's the size of this problem? The job sector is $2 billion. Now, that's a report from the industry of credit card charges. Obviously, they're not going to be, you know, that each individual psychic is not going to report what they get under the table, or the people who scam people. So, that just can include the losses I'm about to talk to in this presentation. So, yes, it's all fraud, but I'm going to be talking about the big numbers, not $100 for a reading. So in 10 years, iGuards recovered $3 million. Those are obviously only the successful prosecutions. There are so many people who don't know who to reach out for. If they do, they're fright frightened like that other client uh, who could have been a client but decided not to go forward. Most losses are absolutely never recovered because even when they go to, to court, plea bargains are made. They, they get a, a month's jail time or something like that, and they don't even have to give back any money. Some individual losses are small, but some are absolutely sta staggering by anyone's measure. Literally millions of dollars, in some cases, from individual people. So, how much do the psychics make? Again, self-reporting of the industry is $2 billion. This is from the American Federation of Certified Psychics and Mediums. Yes, they are certified. <laughs> Therefore, they're real. That's an average psychic, self-reporting. Now, I have to warn you, I'm not putting this out as a career suggestion for people. <laughs> and if anyone takes this as a career suggestion and goes to the dark side, I'm going to be very pissed. <laughs> By self-reporting, $500,000 reasonably successful. And the names that you know, $5 million or more. It's despicable. By self-reporting, even this, I don't know why they even report this, but they, a quarter of a billion dollars have been scammed. And you have to know that number has to be a little tiny bit of the truth. So let's talk about individuals here. So I'm not going to put a face on it because we don't do that with the, with the uh, victims. But that's the name of the psychic. So she convinced her client, who was a male, in love with a woman on Facebook who wouldn't give him the time of day, that she could help that situation because they're twin flames kept apart by negativity. <laughs> Gotta love the poetry. And how many times has she used that line? So, Michelle died after many years and it didn't end the scam. How was that? Because she told the client she can reincarnate Michelle into another woman's body for him. And this went on for another year, I think it was. Total damage to that one person. So, for that, she took a plea bargain with a sentence of less than a year and no restitution paid. Wow. Not unusual at all. Linda Marks. I highlighted marks because uh, if you know what a, a con artist calls their victims, I, I think this is kind of funny mark. because there are a lot of marks who are psychics. So uh, a few years ago she defrauded her client of $50,000, typical claims. The interesting part to me is that, yeah, earlier she had done $2 million to people and she was still out on the street doing that. She no doubt is on the street now. Another marks, this is Gina Marie. In 2010, she caused a, a client to lose a half of a million dollars, sentenced to 18 months in prison, and forced to pay restitution. Now, that's unusual, and this is Nygaard's uh, uh, client, so that's why that happened. She was also arrested when she was out on the street again in 2018, 340,000 from many victims. This time, Nygaard got her sentenced to six years in prison, and she had to pay restitution. This was such a big case. She, this woman went on for a decade for doing this, and Nygaard pursued her for that long. And so CBS had a true crime drama called Pink Collar Crimes last year. I don't know if anybody watched it. But it starred Nygaard himself, because I couldn't get anybody to play him as well as he did. He said. <laughs> um, this is very recent. This is last month. I'm not going to say her last name. Sherry said a witch had placed a curse on her. Uh, this is a typical one. A curse is on your family, and you're all going to die unless you, you know, come to me for help. Seven years, Brazilian medical student. She was in the US, where she met Sherry. And uh, she, took, she took funds from, she sold all of her property. I believe she changed her jobs and became a stripper because that made more money than what she was doing, which I think she was in med school uh, at the time. She took out loans, her family inheritance went to pay this. Not so much. 
And um, Nygaard prosecuted this one and, in fact, did get her to pay restitution. So that was a, a good outcome. So who are these victims? Um, well, I mentioned one was a medical student, so it can't be a dummy. But most people say, ah, you know, they deserve it. They're just, they're just totally, ridiculously stupid people. Well, it turns out, college professors, lawyers, doctors, medical doctors, and, and not, not uh, naturopath. So, <laughs> so Nygaard says, you're on their territory, and they know how to take advantage of that. All they have to do is a fancy magic trick or come up with some fact that you can't she, they couldn't have gotten anywhere else, and you're hooked. And as I mentioned, some people just won't report this kind of a crime. Um, this is another quote from Nygaard. And summarizing this, it's basically, they're too embarrassed. He had one client who called him up, wanted to just tell him about the person he went to so he could keep an eye on him, but wasn't going to put his own name in the paper, because he'd lost $200,000, and that was not worth his reputation at the university. And again, the psychics know this. So now we're going to get to the who's to blame part of this. Well, that's kind of obvious. Don't know what we do about it, but. So this is an interesting one. Uh, last year's Pew poll, 41% respondents say believe in psychics, mediums, that sort of thing. 10%, um, as I said, of atheists. But that still shocks me. So, you know, once we have a belief like that, or even if you're not sure and you hear your friends talking about it, people at work, which I do all the time, people argued I shouldn't come talk about this, because their friend is a psychic and she knows it for a fact. Another one got a read from John Edward, and, you know, the biggest douche in the universe, but he said <laughs> one word to her, her ex-husband's name, and she will not be swayed that that's not true. And I'm going to put the spotlight here on television. I hear this is not such a problem in some countries, which maybe it's because in, in their media they don't do what you're about to see here, but this is a big thing here. Practically every station has something, right? Everyone knows Teresa Caputo. I mean, it's clear, that's what it says on the, on the official site of, of the network she's on. She contacts spirits and departed loved ones. Um, she's been around a long time. This is a newer guy. I talked about him last year because the girl skeptics had a hand in his Wikipedia article and adding skepticism to it. But he talks to the Hollywood celebrities, so that's really a bad situation because anytime one of those gets contacted by their dead relatives and it's proof that there's an afterlife and they're famous so that they get written off by CNN and such. This guy's relatively new, Thomas John. He picks up people in his Uber and talk, tells them in the back seat that their dead relative is contacting them and talks them all about it. You're gonna, remember his name, Thomas John. We're going to talk about him a little bit later. So those are the one of the big name people that get their own shows, but of course the smaller people are old. Alex started communicating with the dead when she was just a toddler. She's a wife and a mom who also happens to talk to dead people. Please welcome celebrity pet psychic. Our next guest is a clear way to the stars. We're back with a group of friends who share a very unique bond. They are all psychic. Of course they are. Thank you, Dr. Oz. <laughs> so, is he a medical doctor, by the way? Yeah. Um, God. So, <laughs> so besides television, uh, there's other well-famous people. Gwyneth Paltrow, she's got a big following. Everyone knows about Goop here, probably. And this is even more Goop from Gwyneth Paltrow. There's a medical medium named Anthony Williams. He was mentioned in one of the other presentations. He talks to a, a spirit to give him information for people who call him with illnesses, and he passes it on to them. How that is not medical malpractice on both his part and Gwyneth Paltrow's, I don't understand. By the way, if you love when the culture as much as I do. This is, a, this, is a, this is an article I wrote, which is not in Skeptical Inquirer, it's on another site, but you can Google it by Pepper Potts Supervillain. And uh, I really take her and, uh, and Goop to task for what all they do. The, the, this is just a uh, you know, you know, tip of the iceberg. So, what's the connection between the media presenting these people as real, who become famous, and then, you know, Joe or Sally going down to the street corner psychic with a sign in the window for a free reading. And again, John Oliver said it fantastically. I mean, let him tell you. What's the connection? Because this surprisingly large, often predatory industry relies on popular culture to lend it credence and validity. To put it another way, every time a psychic makes a grieving widow cry on Dr. Oz, ten con artists get their wings. <laughs> 
I'm going to play that again if I can. Is that... Because this surprisingly large, often predatory industry relies on popular culture to lend it credence and validity. To put it another way, every time a psychic makes a grieving widow cry on Dr. Oz, ten con artists get their wings. It's amazing that that's so right on. And again, thank you, Dr. Oz, yes. So, once that's in your head, that you believe this stuff because you see it on television, you can't go anyplace without seeing these. And storefronts, magazines, there are books, all sorts of things. It, it, it just reinforces the belief. So many people advertise for this, it has to be real. So I came across this one personally on the way to a restaurant last month. High school with a psychic fair. Get them while they're young. I just thought that was despicable. And of course, in the days of the internet, they, you get these, I get emails all the time, free psychic reading. Here you just put your email address, if you can see it in there, and you'll get your free psychic reading. I'm um, gullible. And I'm, and I'm sure it'll never cost you another dime. At gmail.com. And then if you want to go to the authorities because you've been ripped off, you might get that. Yep, police chief. Go to a medium. So this comes to mind about what we have to do to prevent people from falling into this. This is a famous quote from Mark Twain. So you have to teach them first what to look out for before they fall into the trap, because then it's very hard to tell them that they have been fooled. And there's a corollary to that. If you think you can't be fooled, then you may actually be one. But that wasn't Mark Twain, so I'm just saying. <laughs> so what can we do about this? Well, we can make an attempt to improve the laws and force existing laws, because in fact, Manhattan, where, where apparently there are flourishing psychics in all the neighborhoods, include the wealthiest ones, already the state is it's a punishable uh, by jail offense. Doesn't matter, because it's not enforced. We can de religify people. Is that a word? Well, if it's not, now it is. So. Um, but that might not totally help, because I showed you the information before, and I mentioned it, that the uh, Pew poll said that 41% of, of uh, people believe in it, 10% of atheists. But the problem is, people who drop out of mainstream religions and consider themselves spiritual are at a 60% rate. So, not necessarily going to help. Improve the educational system. We need to get them while they're young. That's, that's a fact. But I'm going to talk a little about what's in the skeptical wheelhouse right now. All right? What, what can we do as skeptics? Um, we can confront the media outlets when they promote psychics and mediums. The New Zealand Skeptical Society recently had a really good push to uh, target the venues of, of places in New Zealand who were having psychics. We can increase the frequency of psychic stings, involve the press, and document that. So the thing with the documenting is, if you went to Susan and Mark's workshop, you heard all about Operation Pizza Roll against uh, Thomas John. It was in New York Times, that's fantastic. And then it was, um, I'm not going to give you the de details here, except that they were in the audience and with fake Facebook profiles, and Thomas John read it all back to them. So maybe the spirits told them and wanted to make them look like a fool. So after the New York Times article was history, um, other people reported on it. Hey, this was the New York Times, it's got to be cool. Um, Thomas Westbrook, who might be in the audience, did a fantastic video. Thomas, you here? No? Didn't make it. So he did a great one and really documented what was going on. But the bottom line is that stuff all disappears from the news fairly recently, you know, quickly. And then you have to put it on a source that stays. So we updated a wiki bio for Thomas John, a seatbelt psychic, and we put the information from the New York Times article. So now when you Google Thomas John, you'll get the Wikipedia article. Also the same for Matt Fraser, who was another person who they did this thing on. He didn't do hot reading, but there were a lot of articles about cold reading. Tyler Henry, he wasn't in a sting, but we, as I mentioned, we have a lot of criticism on his article. And the thing that, reason that's important, two million plus views. So to summarize, despite the lack of proof, the ubiquitous fawning of the media makes people believe these powers are real, and that contributes to convincing people that psychics can help solve their problems. And this exposes desperate people to the possibility of devastating, unrecoverable site, uh, fraud. Any old media outlets perpetrating the public's belief in psychic powers have substantial blood stains all over their hands. So that was my summary from my article. If anyone wants to send in as a quote of the week to Skeptic Sky, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> and finally, as a community to protect the public, if we're going to do that, we need to confront the people who promote these people, these fraudsters, 
continue sting operations to expose them, and use Wikipedia, YouTube, and other popular media to educate the public. Thank you.